Hello, dear friends. I have been able to be with you, but uh, I did not want to miss this important appointment. Today is uh, a special day because uh, we will present together with two teachers from my school. They are Professor Gemma de Leon and Professor Giuseppe Felice from Spain and Sicily, two nice places in our international school. Two physiotherapists of my school that they will present two special topics for you in this international congress. I hope the next event we can be together in person with all of you Joy of uh, this international congress, uh, that magnificent, magnificent congress that I love uh, too much. And uh, we will go today to the presentation. We will talk about a specific topic in rehabilitation, that is uh, the scoliosis. We will develop in a short time our personal opinion in our school regarding the scoliosis, the diagnosis, and the treatment for that particular dysfunction that uh, all rehabilitated people will deal with all around the world. I think everybody in our your personal career will deal with this particular topic, scoliosis. I call it this presentation functional scoliosis and I will try to explain why uh, during the presentation today. I think all of you know me very well. I am Professor Di Rocca, the director of the NPR International School. Our school is uh, a particular school with, where we have the whole medical sciences working together learning together with the same protocol that is myofunction and postural rehabilitation. Today we will not talk about myofunction and postural rehabilitation, but we will go ahead with the scoliosis. This is my team from the school. This is Professor Gemma Leon, physiotherapist from Spain. Myself, Professor Di Rocca, the director of the school, and Professor Giuseppe Felice, the massotherapist from Italy. Functional scoliosis, why I did the topic, the name, the name of the topic like this, we will see today why. We will see today what is scoliosis, we know very well what it is, and the causes, in our opinion, and the treatment we propose in our school. What is scoliosis? Uh, scoliosis is very simple, it's a lateral deviation or deviation to the left or right of the spine. In our opinion in the, in the school, we have two types of scoliosis, the true scoliosis or real scoliosis and the functional scoliosis. This is a real scoliosis where the colon is larger than the body can accommodate. We call that in our school the real scoliosis and structural scoliosis. But the other one is the adaptative scoliosis, where the spine adapts as a consequence of a general dysfunction of the organisms. 90% in our opinion of cases, it is an adaptation, 
to postural dysfunctions due to postural receptor problems, mainly, yeah, for example, amniotacin system. Dysfunction can create dysmorphosis. We will see how oculomotor system can create dysmorphosis and foot support and biochemistry. We will develop this topic in this short presentation for all of you. And then uh, we will see the causes, in our opinion, that produce scoliosis. If you focus on that, uh, scoliosis is a symptom. It's not a disease. It's a symptom of something who is not working well in our body, in our posture. The main causes, as I told you before, is the they are the incoordination of the main receivers of postural tonic system. Here I, I will not talk about posturology, but our posture is regulated by receptors. The main receptors are oculomotor system and foot support and the craniofacial system, as you will see, is a big disturber of the posture. The biochemistry, that means um, the internal environment also can create problems in the muscle chains. Muscle chains will not will function very well and then we will we that situation can produce scoliosis. For example, nutrition and intoxication. What I mean nutrition? The hypersensibility of foods, the intolerances, and intoxication of different environment, external intoxication and internal intoxication. We will not talk about that because we don't have time. But all these things are creating problems in our muscle change. And with the muscle change are not functioning very well at the activities. It will create uh, an adaptive scoliosis. This is the most common scoliosis around the world. Current fashion system, very important disturber of the posture. Oculomotor system, one of the receptors, and you will see that the fashion system affect one of the most important receptors. The foot support, another receptor, another important receptor of our body. And as I told you, biochemistry. Biochemistry. In internal and external intoxication can create, uh, obviously, scoliosis. Functional scoliosis, the most common scoliosis all around the world. How it is produced? the functional alteration. I will try it in a short time to explain this uh, concept. The craniofacial system, how craniofacial, you, you, you are always thinking how craniofacial system can affect the body. Okay? But it's the thing um, sometimes uh, we don't take care in diagnosis and treatment. How the craniofacial system, craniofacial system is a special system that it is if it is not in balance with the rest of the body can create alteration in our posture mainly eh, with the mandibular position the jaw position when the jaw position is not centrated it can alter eh? that situation will alter one of the main receptors of our body of the tonic postural system the oculomotor system altering the function of this and chronically also will alter the food support. These two alterations plus biochemistry do alteration of uh, our body creating scoliosis. Changing the position, lateral deviation, forward position, retroposition, these things are creating this function, they alter one of the main receptors, one of the main receptors, the oculomotor system, alter the convergence, alter the posture. You will see how it's happened, eh? 
how that said the manufacturing system cannot tell the muscle chain I think you are thinking about that the yoide system is the connection between upper part of the body and lower part of the body okay? when something is not working well in the manufacturing system is creating one of the most dangerous defense of our our body bruxisms bruxism is not a stress I, I cannot talking about bruxism today but bruxism is not a stress bruxism is a defense when joe is not working well it's creating some problem here defense is bruxism because something in the changing of the jaw can accept the temporal mandibular joint and that is why the system is start. It creating chronically muscle, muscle hyperactivity and then chronic postural alteration. When the jaw is changing position, start the systems trying to destroy the teeth very bad defense eh? because it's creating a circle that never stops. When it's danger here, starting bruxism is here, muscle hyperactivity and chronically alteration in the whole body. Eh? Changes in the jaw position, increased depression, alarm, bruxism. Very bad defense in our body. This hyperactivity chronically from here is coming to here some lumbar problems are related also with the, the craniofacial system and chronically surviving to the foot support and obviously scoliosis. When the central relationship of the jaw is loose, starting the blood systems hyperactivity in the muscle change, lock of the craniosacral breathing, dental abrasion, TNJ diseases, neuromuscular skeletal diseases, and then scoliosis. The most uh, dangerous situation in the changes of the jaw is uh, the back position. Yeah, the back position is creating, you see here from the back, when the jaw is going back, eh, is creating a lot of hyperactivity in the muscle chain. A lot, a lot of hyperactivities in the muscle chain. The neck, cranial muscles, eh, and uh, slowly, 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 is going down. Eh, and this is creating adaptive scoliosis. At the end, this hyperactivity is creating also a foot support alteration. This is here all these muscles creating hyperactivity and then slowly 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 going to the neck is going to the and dorsal it's affecting also this joint also chronically and slowly slowly going back and back 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 and scoliosis and uh, I will show you some Medical cases how the jaw position can tear the jaw and cannot tear the eyes, cannot tear the posture. You will see. This is a research I did many, many years ago in 1990 in our school, and trying to demonstrate how the changes of the jaw position cannot tear the posture. First case mandibular deviation to the left is producing a left hypoconvergence and we see the posturometry breathing. Look at here, left lateral deviation, hypoconvergence and then the alteration when the mouse is open 1.6 kilos overload to the right and then 5 kilos overload to the left. Second case Mandibular deviation to the right, right hypoconvergence, and you see the posture meter missure. Lateral deviation, hypoconvergence, and alteration of the posture. And the last one, 
This is the forward position. It can be forward or retro position. In this case, for, forward position. The forward position is creating bilateral hypoconvergence. And you see the rhythm. Forward position, bilateral convergence, but there is not overload in the side. Just the very center move forward. That demonstrates how the kind of facial dysfunction can alter the posture and then can create also functional scoliosis. The posturometer is a very nice instrument because you can measure the alteration of the body and you can demonstrate what happened. You know? When we do this research, we do the task with this particular posturometer that is. Um, uh, based on the Kepanji and the Kepanji concept, the body-wide distribution, have different sensors, we can do diagnosis, we can measure, we can do a, a lot of things. But another thing I did is another is another research with that. Anytime, anytime, look at how we can affect also the foot supports, the contact, the interferences in the teeth. Yeah? Look at that, how the, when we create or we have some pre-contact in, uh, for example, the anterior part of the mouth, yeah? we call that anterior gut, yeah? is missing load in the first metatarsus or molateral. When we have this pre-contact, that change the job position, obviously, you know, uh, in the lateral part yeah, where we train yeah, is creating or reducing the load in the fifth metatarsus and when we have contacts, pre-contact on the back of the teeth, we call that Wilson's uh, speaker, uh, we reduce the load in the calcaneus. You will see that, yeah, but uh, in a graphic, yeah, in a graphic like this. Yeah, you will see how eh, the first metatarsus is related uh, with the anterior guide, the fifth metatarsus is re related with the lateral part of the occlusion of the butt, and the calcaneus is related with the back. Imagine something on the top can create alteration on the bottom. This dysfunction. Uh, eh, can create a scoliosis and obviously that diverts from the bottom to the top. This is the situation how the teeth can create an alteration of the rest of the body. And then we go to the treatment what we propose eh, for the scoliosis. Eh, obviously, if we understood that uh, the main causes are the receptor alterations and biochemistry alterations, we have to deal with this kind of treatment. We have to deal with the reception treatment, proprioception treatment, biochemistry treatment and rehabilitation. If we, if we do that, our rehabilitation will be perfect. And uh, the treatment we propose in our school uh, is as follows. The protocol, the NPR protocol, consists in deprogramming the sensors that uh, are not working. The facial system, ocular motor system, foot supports and biochemistry. And then the physiotherapy and osteopathic treatment. You will see how yeah, we will do that. Craniofacial yeah. system. Craniofacial system, we do that with bed, body equilibrium device. This is not a bike. This is a device for every medical sciences. In our school, we teach that for physiotherapists, for doctors, for dentists, for everybody. That is a special uh, device uh, that uh, annulates the craniofacial system and allows uh, the cranial muscle the, the massive change and relax and allow us to have a good rehabilitation. An oculomotor system, we propose the magnetotherapy for the eyes, the exercises 
different kind of exercises. And the target of the exercises is to rehabilitate the uh, ocular motor system, the foot support. In the foot support, we do magnetic therapy and uh, for the massive chains and difference in salts, the programming in salts and uh, dynamic, physiodynamic in salts that correct the foot support. And in the biochemistry, obviously, we do diet and cleaning. Diet and cleaning, this detoxification. And obviously, you, you want to know that our our opinion about the therapy, yeah, you are physiotherapists or osteopaths, people who do rehabilitation. And I will tell you what is uh, our protocol. Uh, our protocol for rehabilitation in the scoliosis. In the rehabilitation, we do a stretching, different techniques of stretching, pilates, postural ergonomics exercises, that is very important to treat the scoliosis, the craniosacral therapy to unblock the sutures and the craniosacral breathing, the spinal osteopathy, the visceral osteopathy and the value osteopathy. This is the team that work together in our school. Yeah? To treat the scoliosis, we need a collaboration. We need collaboration for different interdisciplines that work together to do a good job without relapses. And uh, I have to say thank you for your participation. Uh, I'm very, it's very sad for me to not be there. Because you know, my school uh, moved me a lot and uh, creating a lot of shop around the world and uh, it's very difficult to organize sometimes my 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 working time. But thank you so much for your participation. I hope we'll be together the next uh, meeting. I think the next meeting will be in France. I think I, I can I can be with you and a lot of people of my team can be with you. Eh? This is our this is my contacts if you want to contact me. Eh? sdrocagmail.com my mail www.dirocca-in-the-middle-sibelio.com Silverstone is our the company we do with our courses and uh, we have a web app, eh? don't miss the web app, the web app of our school, you have a lot of topics, a lot of courses there. I hope you enjoy the presentation eh? and uh, I hope uh, we will be together in the next meeting eh? and enjoy Dubai, Dubai is a nice city, it's a fantastic city, I love Dubai and for me it's very sad. To, don't be with you in that, uh, in that fantastic city and this fantastic meeting. I hope next year we will meet together, we can shake our hands and enjoy the presentation. I hope you enjoy the presentation and enjoy the presentation of our team of Professor Leon and Professor Felice, two specialists in our team. They will show you a very nice presentation for this meeting. Bye bye, everybody, from my heart. Eh? I give you a love and I hope I will see you in the next time in presence in the presentation. Bye bye everybody and I hope you enjoy the presentation. The NPR International School presents the video of our teacher Gemma Leon Bravo, who will show us a patient treated with the rehabilitative protocol of our school. Enjoy the presentation. Good morning. I am Professor Gemma Leon Bravo, physiotherapist from the Faculty of Medicine, Nursing and Physiotherapy of Cordoba in Spain and a member of the NPR International team whose director is Prof. Sir Dr. Silverio Duraca. Today, I come to expose a case treated through the method of the MPR and its impact on the tonic postural system. Let's go on to describe the case and I hope you enjoy. So I am going to introduce our method a bit so that you can understand how we study and investigate posture. So our goal is to take the diagnosis from local to global and from individual physiotherapy and osteopathic work to interdisciplinary. MPR, 
or postural myofunctional rehabilitation, is a diagnostic and therapeutic method that uses tools from different health disciplines working as a team to achieve a better therapeutic benefit for the patient. The objective of the MPR is the balance of the stomatognathic, or craniofacial system with the postural tonic system or the rest of the body. Our priority is diagnosis, all specialties intervene with the same optics of diagnosis and treatment. Is, rehabilitation because rebalancing all systems. Is, myofunctional because is doing a physiological musculoskeletal rebalancing. Is, postural because is doing a rehabilitation of the stomatognathic system with the rest of the body. We carry out a clinical, instrumental, and complementary analysis diagnosis. Clinical, we make an analysis of oculomotor system, postural analysis, stomatognathic analysis, instrumental, posturometry, stabilometry, complementary biochemical analysis, intolerances. The treatment protocol used is divided into three phases. The first phase deprogramming of the central nervous system. The sensory deprogramming of the receptors is carried out as follows. The oculomotor system with proprioceptive magnetic fields. The stomatognathic system in growth and in adults with body equilibrium device and craniofacial orthopedic. Foot support with magnetotherapy and plantar deprogrammers. And biochemistry with detoxification of the organism and integration then follows the postural rebalance or treatment itself. And finally the sensory reprogramming. For the oculomotor system. Prisms and exercises. For the stomatognathic system. In growth and in the adult with different devices. For foot support, dynamic physio insoles. And finally for biochemistry. Intestinal rebalancing, diet, and integration. We are going to give an example to show you the interdisciplinary evolution of a case from the MPR. About a case. 38-year-old patient. Referred by traumatologist with TCO of SD. Cervicocephalic. Symptoms, neck pain and headache, dizziness, ringing in the ears, tinnitus, dorsal and lumbosacral pain. For six months indigestion and heartburn. Intermittent psoriasis for six months. 2012 shingles for six months bad breath habitual fatigue tendency to lose weight digestive disorders hiatal hernia and irritable colon and intestinal hyperpermeability asthmatic in childhood who disappeared allergic to pollen dog hair and mites that disappeared syncope two years ago amalgams titanium implants and root canals family history maternal hypertension he is on sick leave making it totally impossible for him to perform his functions and he cannot carry out a sporting life that has been progressively declining thus we can see in the lateral view or sagittal plane a patient with significant rectification of the cervical lordosis with a significant thoracic hump and both shoulders more anteriorized said posture is seen to be affected by retraction of the anterior cervical fascia that affects the hyoid position as seen on the x-ray tension in the masseter and temporal muscles is also visualized upper jaw forward to the lower hump attitude and chain closure anterior in the anteroposterior view a right turaco lumbar convexity deviation is observed with a higher right shoulder and left pelvis it can be observed at the sagittal level due to the same retraction of the anterior chain. A bilateral flexion of the hips causing a postural attitude with slight triple flexion of the MMAI. The convergence test shows bilateral hypoconvergence consistent with bilateral TMJ dysfunction. That is why the differential test, in which we annul the TMJ occlusion, is corrected and converges perfectly when we correct the bite. Hence the direct relationship of the TMJ at the postural level with the oculomotor system. In the arm extension test, it is observed that there is a difference in the length of MMSs 
The left arm is longer and after correcting the bite and balancing it with cotton rolls, it is observed how they are regulated and homogenized. In the left and right rotation test, as well as flexion extension, limitations were observed, especially in left rotation and cervical extension. An alteration in foot support is also observed, with a bipodal valgus and flexion of MMII in both knees. Also, the left foot falls more in valgus than the right. In the March test, the patient walks forwards and to the left with his mouth closed and to the right with his mouth open. In the slide with the patient seen from behind, greater internal rotation of the MID is observed and the greater elevation of the right cheekbone, in addition to greater anterior elevation of the right shoulder. In the photo to observe the short leg, the left one looks shorter. In the bite, the upper jaw is more advanced than the lower jaw and with a great imbalance of the bite on the right side. Regarding the left observing laterality to the left, we see again the relationship between the imbalance of the bite with the cervical rectification and the anteriority of the bite. Here we can see the comparative image of the patient's mouth and the lateral x-ray. The treatment protocol was as follows. First, osteopathic and craniosacral deprogramming. Oxypitadlantian epistrophius complex. C0, C1, C2. Action on the different cranial sutures, sphenoid, frontal, zygoma, upper jaw. Action on orbital sutures, zygomatic frontal, internal sphenoidal suture, maxillary suture. Second, chain reactions, hyoid system. Third, postural functional deprogrammer body equilibrium device for craniofacial system. Annulation of the negative action. Fourth, biochemical deprogramming. General detoxification and heavy metals, cilantro and chlorella. Food intolerance and increased intestinal permeability. Reprogram biochemistry with diet and intestinal rebalancing. The patient underwent a food hypersensitivity test to gluten, fatty fish, milk, egg, tomato, and rice, pork, chicken, and beef. After deprogramming the patient, receiving his treatment for one year, and reprogramming it, here are the results. Better mandibular position in the more centered anterior view. There is cervical lordosis and its center of gravity is better traversing the patient's midline while being less flexed. There is also a better balance of the shoulder girdle with respect to the pelvic girdle with respect to the sagittal plane. The patient's muscular defense is more evident. In the next slide, the greater tone is observed in the trunk extensors, evidencing greater balance with the anterior chain and better accommodation of the scapulae as well as a better position of the thoracobrachial triangle. In the following radiological slide at the anteroposterior level of the spine, a decrease in spinal deviation and better positioning of the TMJ is observed, in addition to better postural balance in the pelvic and scapular girdle. The following X-ray shows the patient with a greater anteroposterior volume at the level of the thorax with a more balanced posterior chain than the anterior chain and a balanced center of gravity with a preserved cervical lordosis and a better positioned and balanced gaze with the bite. It must be said that the patient's biochemistry improved remarkably, his colon being non-irritable and tolerating almost 100% of the food. Sporting he returned to do all his sports and returned to his working life without a problem. Thus, it can be concluded that the patient recovers his quality of life and obtains 100% of his functionality, observing the MPR, as a highly effective form of diagnosis and therapy. I hope the presentation has been useful. Thank you for your attention, and follow our courses at the MPR International School. Send your questions by mail and we will answer them with pleasure. And we will surely see you at the next event.
Hi everybody, I'm Giuseppe Felice, muscle physiotherapist from Italy, and today we're talking about a functional exercise for our brook season. In fact, after the great pandemic, case of pathological brook season have increased all over the planet. Okay, we start. What is brook season? To talk in the, of the bruxism, we need to talk a uh, cranial fascial system, not just uh, TMJ, but its movement depends of the muscle, ligaments, and teeth occlusion. TMJ is not isolated, it is a part of the cranial fascial system not only TMJ. The craniofascial system houses two of most important systems of the human body, the central nervous system and stomatognetic system, here and here. The craniofascial system is made up of various bones and muscle, which work in harmony with the rest of the body. All the bones that are part of this system, the jaw is the one with the most mobility. This mobility, however, is conditioned by the dental occlusion, which when closed, blocks a jaw position, whether that position is balanced or unbalanced. The correct functioning of the craniofacial system depends to a large extent on a balanced mandibular posture, which in turn depends on a good functional occlusion to maintain it. This is how an optimal local and general neuromuscular balance is created. When the jaw changes position, the intraarticular pressure increases, which can cause irreversible damage to the TMJ. For this reason, in and around the TMJ, mainly in the retroarticular zone, there are very important defense receptors. Here. And when the pressure increases, these receptors send an alarm signal to the CNS, the only immediate defense mechanism available is bruxism. The body activates this mechanism in an attempt to release the dental block that is forcing this abnormality in the position of the jaw and increased pressure. This increase of, of pressure in that zone causes uh, hypertonic contraction of the muscle here, here, and all in the neck and the, all the body. Unfortunately, this causes more damage creates hyperactivity and dental abrasion, both of which further increase intraarticular pressure. This creating an endless vicious circle. In fact, we can see a changes in the position of the jaw, increase the TMJ pressure, alarm signal, and at the ending, bruxism. We can talking about a pathological bruxism. In adulthood, bruxism is a pathology. It should not exist. It is a very wrong protection mechanism that tries to eliminate the occlusal lock, which blocks the traumatic mandibular position. 
In this photo, we can see that the, bit, the deep byte block the jaw, for example. And the central nervous system tries to eliminate the bite, which blocks the traumatic mandibular position. We can see the dental wear caused by bruxism begins to be observed in this area. Okay, functional exercise. Functional exercise performed by the patient daily reduce pain, tensions, and stress. These exercises help in the rehabilitation treatment for dentists, for physiotherapists, and for the patient. We have a more uh, ex exercise for the mandibula, for the breathing, for uh, relax, globally relax of the body, an exercise for the mouth and the eyes. If you have a question, you can write me in email for email. Uh, if you want more info for this course, uh, we have created in Silverstone our course of TMJ and posture, and now a new course for bruxism and other course. Thank you for your attention and see you. Bye.